People join the Dull Men's Club because they appreciate the ordinary, they like what we're doing, they get a certain satisfaction. It's a sanctuary for them, a place they can hide out, get away from the glitz and glam, the hurly-burly, all the noise of modern life, the pressures to keep up with the Joneses. I don't know who the Joneses are anyway, do, do you? People often ask us, is this Dull Men's Club, is it a movement? No, it's not a movement. We like to stay put. People also ask us, is the Dull Men's Club one of these 12-step programs? No, 12-step programs try to get people to change their behavior. The Dull Men's Club is a two-step program. We admit we're dull and we're gonna keep it that way. We also have a, a list of a lot of appreciation societies. Appreciating things is what adult men love to do. We're grateful for so many things in our lives. There's the uh, Biscuit Appreciation Society, the, the, the uh, uh, Traffic Cone Preservation Society, the Apostrophe Protection Society, the Cloud Appreciation Society. Peter's hobby now is traveling all around England photographing every one of the 115,000 post boxes in England. And they say, the saying goes that it, it, it's great to have a hobby, an interest apart from work and watching television and the garden and this, that and the other. And my hobby, as I touched upon early, has come round to photograph visiting and photographing post boxes, recording any changes, condition, damage, um, painting, etc, etc. The hobby has become a photographic challenge. I don't think I could ever photograph them all. There are 115,000 table give of boxes on Rome, in Royal Mail's collection and nobody really could uh, photograph them all. I think I've probably done about 2,500 so far. I like to take in as much of where I'm going or, or what, what's in front of me as I can, whether it be buildings, you know, architecture, um, scenery, post boxes obviously. It's become addictive in a way that it takes me to places that I would not normally visit. And I've been fortunate in using the grid references that we've got and with the help of my son managed to get those grid references, all of them into my little GPS unit and we've set it that it will give me an alarm, a little ding-a-ling warning when I approach a post box. Often one can look at a street and you can see the red pillar box in the distance, but often you can't. Tucked round a corner, it may be in the wall, and by having this chap, and it will tell me the distance, and it will tell me whether it's south, east, north, west, etc., etc. Very, very useful, and I would be lost without it. There's one gentleman we really admire here in the UK, it's Kevin Beersford. Kevin founded the Roundabout Appreciation Society and is very active with it to this day. As I drew up to this uh, beautiful village of Utford, uh, straight away this, this roundabout greets you and I, I was tingling all, all over at the beauty of it. The whole point of a roundabout is they're so expressive, you can put anything on a roundabout. I've seen uh, statues, fountains, windmills, duck ponds now, which just, just sums up roundabouts, how beautiful they are and how expressive they are. The Roundabout Appreciation Society came about roundabout in 2003. I was running a small printing business and we wanted to come up with a, a calendar that was totally unique. Fed up with your David Beckhams, Jordan, Six Pack Firemen. We came up with Roundabouts of Redditch, which is the, the, the town where the Princess was. What I didn't realise was how popular that, that calendar would become and it sold all around the world. And that spawned, eventually, the best of British roundabouts, which is why I'm here today, to capture this beautiful island. Swindon's magic roundabout, you actually go round that roundabout in the opposite direction. It's the white knuckle ride of all roundabouts. Uh, our society go on day trips there and, and spend the day just going round and round. To have traffic lights on a roundabout, to me, defeats the object. Uh, the whole point of a roundabout is it filters traffic through really easily. It's the best way of filtering traffic. 
The only good part about traffic lights on a roundabout, I suppose, is you can stop and have a look at the roundabout whilst you're waiting for those irritating lights to change. I like to see uh, a roundabout uh, as an oasis on a sea of tarmac. I think they lift our sagging spirits on long, tiresome journeys with their uh, infinite variety of colour and creativeness. Uh, the, the day I stop photographing roundabouts is the day I die. One of the interesting people we've come across recently, at least is interesting for us, is a man who's collecting milk bottles. He has the largest collection of milk bottles in the world, and, he, and the collection continues to grow to this day. As far as I'm aware, I have the largest collection of British milk bottles in the British Isles. Like all collecting, you've got the dealers, you've got the people who collect um, for monetary advancement, um, but there are quite a few of us who are quite dedicated milk bottle collectors who collect them for their own sake. Um, I mean, technically, 17,500 milk bottles are not worth anything. They're just glass, the most common thing on the planet. But to me, they're worth millions because they're my pride and joy. This one is, um, has got a Union Jack on, or the, the Union flag, I should say, to be technically correct. Um, I'm a royalist anyway, so I have bottles from the Royal Dairy Farm of Windsor, quarts, pints, half pints, right back to the 1950s. Um, but anything with the Union Jack on, I collect. And uh, this is just a very nice example where you have the blue and um, the red, and obviously the milk when it's inside provides the white background. My mission is to get every milk bottle that I haven't got. Park benches are one of the most wonderful things we have all around the world in today's life. They're practically everywhere. I don't mind traveling to an exciting city like Paris, London, New York, as long as I know where there are park benches to sit on. In New York City, for example, Central Park, I regard it, and many of our members do, as the park bench capital of the world. They have a fabulous array of park benches in New York. Uh, the reason I uh, got into brick collecting um, was uh, because I thought really that um, it was part of our heritage, industrial heritage, that's uh, gone by the board. Um, many bricks these days are, um, are imported from Europe and other places. And nowadays, I would imagine, we import most bricks because there aren't many of our own brick makers left. My wife Maureen is a wee bit long-suffering over the brick problem because I put maybe three rows of bricks down here and as I got more and more I had to extend it. So the thing is I was taking up part of my wife's lawn, well it's not a lawn really, it's grass, but I was taking up her grass so I couldn't put any more down there. So then I had to go to the wall and build the wall up a wee bit, but that keeps falling down. Um, bricks aren't intended to be made, laid like that, you know, but I wanted the name of the um, name of the maker to be showing, but it does occasionally fall down. One thing I like to do when I come to London is to go to what I understand is the United Kingdom's longest escalator. It's the escalator at the Angel Tube Station. I love to ride that escalator. It's a nice, long, comfortable ride, plenty of time to just stand there and relax, not be worried about getting off. There's always that anxiety that builds up when you get to the end of an escalator ride about whether the people in front of you may just stop. And you, you know, if you get to an end of an escalator, keep walking. And of course, I obey the signs and stand on the right. And a long escalator ride gives me time to read the posters along the sides of the escalator. A lot of times I don't quite finish reading it when it comes, when I first see it, 
But I know on a long ride, the, the post is going to repeat itself at least one, if not two or three more times. And I get time to read the whole thing. There's a phone number there. I even get time to copy it down. I love the Angel Tube tube station. I love the Angel Tube escalator ride. A lot of women appreciate dull men. They like a dull man in their life. Dull men are fabulous around the house. In the kitchen in particular, they love to do the washing up. My ex-wife hated the fact that I was a roundabout spotter and in the end she left me. But I don't mind that because I can go out now roundabout spotting whenever I want. I've got no, I don't have any quarrels over that. So that's the positive side of things. Um, she uh, is a bit more minimalist, if you like, than me. Um, she doesn't like clutter, doesn't like it to be too untidy, but it's all out here. But she does love the trips and the holidays. My wife of just over well, 41 or 42 years is very, very supportive of what, what I do. She often comes with me while we're watching and looking for post boxes. I think as a, a roundabout enthusiast, uh, I see myself as an artist. It's, uh, it may sound big-headed, but yes, I do consider myself an artist. Life's going too fast, and it's gone over the top uh, uh, with some of us, you know. Certainly me and Molly, yeah. You can call me dull if you like, but I don't think so. Life is continually getting faster and faster. We travel faster than we ever did. You remember back when you had to go back and forth, England to America, by boat? You know, you had a nice seven to ten days to relax and think about things as you rock away. Now we get there in seven to ten hours, uh, so fast. And even going farther back, think back when, think, think back in when people, be, before cars, I mean, it just took forever to get somewhere. People used to, to go by horseback and buggy. There was so much time to, to think about things and ruminate over them and plan. Now we have this instant uh, way of doing everything, faster, quicker. I suppose now I'm technically retired, um, an OAP or whatever you want to call me, um, I suppose I've slowed down quite a bit. But um, somebody said the unfortunate thing about when you get to a certain age is life's just downhill. Well, I'm quite happy to have a lot of downhill now because all I've been doing all my life is pushing uphill. So maybe that's one side of dull, but no, life has never been so full. If somebody were to say I were dull, I would appreciate that. It wouldn't bother me at all. I take it as a compliment, actually. <laughs>